Um, our next speaker is Susan Dapka. Um, Susan is a, a very dedicated campaigner for social justice, highlighting her record on affordable housing homelessness, mental health, uh, harm reduction, and lesbian, gay, and bisexual and trans issues since coming out as a community leader. Whoops, Are you okay? Yeah. Almost 20 years ago. Keeps on running. <laughs> if that was an iPhone, it would be shattered. Um, as founder and chair of the Trans Lobby Group, uh, Susan helped uh, lead a lengthy campaign to persuade the Minister of Health uh, to uh, fund, again, sex reassignment surgery for trans people in Ontario, help change the Vital Statistics Act sex designation so that trans people's legal documents more accurately reflect their lived identity, and amended the Ontario Human Rights Code to include gender identity and gender expression. Um, she also served on the board of uh, Pride Toronto, which hosted World Pride 2014, and is past Fierte, Canada's Pride's re Central Regional Director for Ontario. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what you, you offer today. Thanks. Well, thank you for inviting me. Let's take the mic. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Technology, technology. So if you're wondering about my Blackberry, it's kind of gone down a few times, but it's kind of like a trans, trans Blackberry. It uh, keeps coming back to life. <laughs> it, it, will, it just keeps on ticking. You know, trans people are some of the some of the toughest people I've met, and I've met, you know, mental health, a lot of challenges, but I mean, those of us who do survive are uh, quite resilient and strong, so I just wanted to, thought I'd throw that in there with, uh, um, and I'll start my time now. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've always had to work our way in. So anyways, hi, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for the people who, um, um, suggested perhaps with some strength it's important that trans be included in the um, umbrella of queer that's how i'm going to want to spend my first 15 minutes <laughs> five minutes your first 15 uh, my first 50 yes i just joked well, my first set of minutes um as you know when i saw the panel on uh, queer like okay well that's uh that's a default then is sexual orientation not necessarily something um uh, looks like an interesting event i'll come for the first hour then go to my other meeting but then they asked me to be on the panel and so I'm going to miss my other media and spend more time with you, and I'm so thrilled. Um, but in trans worlds, and I'm talking about trans as a transsexual experience, um, life expectancy in South America, 28 years old. I just celebrated. We're doing aging, eh? Let's trouble queer and let's trouble the word aging in terms of how we measure age. I think that's kind of important to think about it differently. and. You know, for LGBT people and coming out and experiences. So for me, it came out at mid-age, which means I'm going to live to about 80, because um, we're going to call coming out at 40 mid-age. Um, means that, um, um, you know, I'm sort of relived my, um, my puberty. <laughs> my puberty and finding out who I am and who I wanted to be. But, um, and so aging should be troubled. But you know, as people have seen the Danish girl studying trans history, um, Magnus Hirschfeld was actually the clinician in the movie, but it wasn't recognized. But um, in 1910 wrote to die transvestite teen. And that was one of the early workings. And it was thought back, back then that uh, cross-dressing or transvestitism, as it was called back then, was a type of sexual orientation. Then we moved forward a number of years, 50 years or so, we got Magnus Hirschfeld, Christine Jordan, who caused a, a big fuss uh, in the 1950s and 60s. Magnus Hirschfeld wrote the transsexual phenomena. But what also happened around that time was um, that I found interesting, and this is the paper I did not hand in, so yay, I got a chance to talk about it. But really, and Dallas Denny writes on this as well, and that was one of my guiding posts on that. Um, and aging's cool, because I get to meet the people I studied at going to conferences, so that's a beauty, the gift of life, right? Um, but um, 
just as sexual orientation was becoming non-medicalized and moving from liberation to rights movements, was it became, there was a number of psychologists that um, took up the study of transsexuality as it emerged. And so in my view, and I would suggest strongly, had the paper been finished, um, and I not dropped that course, <laughs> but uh, that, uh, so we're starting out with the false starting point of queer or sexual or um, uh, around transsexuality. Now mind you, there's an overlap, right? Like, who knows I'm a lesbian or a dyke, right? Unless I told you right now. So there is, we do have those intersex, section, intersectional identities which is always, and there, there's a plethora of those when we start to dig into it. That's what I'm so thrilled about being with academics who are actually going to study this stuff. So I think in that regard, and you've got to stay in range of this mic, don't you? Um, <laughs> but again, too, and the other dividing line is around, for me, around liberation theory, which I think intersectionality talks about only I haven't read the original documents on that, and I should better understand, but around moving to rights theory, and so there's a charter generation, a pre-charter and a post-charter, where we now are much more self-interested. So when I came out as a trans person, I thought in almost 20 years ago, um, working at City Hall, which was not recommended, but things have changed and it's getting better, but it was not cool to be trans back then, actually. It was like pretty, pretty tough. Um, but um, there's that divide around liberation and, and rights. Um, we tend to be really self-interested and not looking broadly at connections with other communities. And I think, you know, a hybrid of those two models moving forward is, uh, you know, if I ever write that book. Or maybe I'll go back to school one day. But um, in the next section, I just want to talk a bit about the trans politics I came into. And I had recognized early on that we were behind. I worked with Egal Canada on uh, marriage equality. We started, it, it was started out as marriage equality and got narrowly defined as uh, same-sex marriage. And I think we need to move back to more broader understanding on that. But I got to meet some really awesome people and I also, felt that stuff when they decided to narrow it to marriage and not trans that we broke off and the trans lobby group uh, broke off and uh, started organizing in Ontario, which um, we accomplished a few things and there's three things just to talk about the trans politics. Um, we, uh, one day I will sit down and write a book when I give up my Blackberry and get off Facebook, but I do love social media. Um, let me just bring my time piece doesn't stay lit for a long time. Um, so we started out with access to health care. The provincial government had just cut that. In hindsight, should have gone for human rights. Had I known the gay history and the lesbian history, would have acquired the legal rights. Um, but we were very much fixed on this access to SRS, sex reassignment surgery, which is an old-fashioned term now. We call it transition-related surgery. You know, I mean, the language is always moving and changing, and it's geographically and it's age-located as well, is it not? Um, but that needed um, around identity documents. Um, we there was a um, our group sort of helped a person um, take a case and they moved out and gone, gone um, stealth is the word, just gone out of the public light and but struck down that to change your, change your uh, um, sex on a legal document like the birth certificates called the uh, Vital Statistics Act actually and each jurisdiction, each province has one but that regulates your record of birth so at birth there's a number of things codified who your parents are, because we need to know who bring up, what your citizenship, where you're born, so you have the citizenship rights. Um, it says things uh, and it uh, marks you for sex. And this predates photo ID and a lot of the technology we have. Um, but it was, you need a transsexual surgery to be able to amend your record of birth so that all your other documents would amend. 
all your other documents would flow from that. And so that has caused a lot of fuss and discrimination for a lot of people. That is now undergoing, and I'm just going to touch on it now because, you know, I've only got so much time. But where we've gone with that, and I just think it's really important, where now each jurisdiction is moving differently. There's um, a number of different groups. So we've got now X on a driver's license. Um, if it was more interactive or if uh, we had more time, just take out your OLIP card and look and you'll see there, if you've had it renewed in the last year, there will not have a gender or sex marker on it. Um, and of course, there's people like me who fought, had to change friggin' laws to get the sex designation that I wanted. And some of us, and that's an age thing, right? Like I think a newer generation is going to be growing up embracing different things that we learned as survival techniques when we were growing up. And uh, so, but as moving forward, I shouldn't be saying this, but what the heck. Um, look for new legal documents with X in the, in the province of Ontario. We've got a couple different ministries <laughs> competing with each other, so that's a good thing. Because what I think, what's key about that is we are dislodging, disrupting patriarchy and sexism by moving away from the binary of um, male and female and the categories that that um, um, has brought us. I'm probably almost, a, I'm, I'm making through these notes, that's okay, feeling good. But the other thing was healthcare. Healthcare, access to healthcare. And this is where we differ between the trans umbrella experience and the transsexual experience and even transgender, a bitter internal politics around, you know. For some of us, medical interventions, uh, of myself, who I will, I think I've gone to being trans and identity shifting and changing with transsexual experience. My experience is very specific to undergoing a set of procedures, having access to health care, but also in the next section I'll talk about social determinants of health. But having access to those is critical for some people to alleviate the, the, the conflict between their lived uh, they're, they're perceived, their feeling of, uh, and it's not a feeling, it's who we believe we are internally and, and all, and, and I don't know, there's better words for it, it may escape me right now, but just, um, Live the identity. Live the identity, I know, I mean, it's like, it's like your heart and soul believes, uh, knows this, but like others don't, but, um, so on that, that's critical to a lot of people. But there's a growing body now with less of a binary, of non-binary, gender fluid, all of that stuff. And so that's kind of really exciting. I'm a little over time in that section, but those three pieces around sexual uh, human rights, federally and provincially, we just got C-16 in June, yay! Uh, there's a professor in the back of the room there. Um, I want to acknowledge the work uh, that a lot of us have helped, but who was uh, there in testimony at the wonderful Senate hearings. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. But hey, we, we, we won the vote. That's kind of what you do in politics and count votes. Um, but um, access to health care, legal documents, and human rights are sort of in view of a realm the framework for social inclusion, and there's so much more work around, you know, identity documents and how we move forward. That took a little longer, but let's move forward now, where are we going kind of thing. Um, we really don't have aging. Like, this is a new experience. Every day I wake up, it's like a new day. And um, we don't have a body of literature we don't have research on aging trans people. We do not have services. This is a new, exciting time. I'm gonna rely on people like Celeste and others in the room who are taking this up, um, who are gonna study this and provide the data we need. There's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a long name, there's a study in British Columbia, um, Cerevex, uh, stigma, and resiliency among vulnerable youth. 
something like that. And there are studies coming out on access to healthcare and surgery in Ontario, but they've done a number of studies. I was at the Canadian Professional Association for Transgender Health just a few weeks ago. It's about three weeks now. There is a body of evidence and literature coming out, so that's going to be really exciting for the next generation. I'm going to, uh, two minutes about, yeah, so I'm going to try to keep a really good eye on that. But I want you to ask some questions. Um, the Trans Health Expansion Project that we're working on too. So things are changing and now actually I think just maybe because I don't have enough time, I'm just going to talk, the framework is when we first getting legislative changes, just so all oh, good we did it. Now we didn't know how to do it because we had never had oh, 10 years to change a friggin' regulation on healthcare. Now trans people are really becoming impatient and we want to be part of the teaching and learning and policy development. Some of us are becoming academics. In a, my dream world, I would be, but you know. Um, but just want to leave one note um, with the last minute that apparently I have my scripture. <laughs> but um, just recognizing we're sharing the time here. On, on Monday is November 20th, Trans Day of Remembrance. And there'll be a number of events um, there's a job fair, there's, we have our event tomorrow at the church um, about building resilience and well-being um, at Metropolitan Community Church, love to invite you, um, but it's a day of sadness. A lot of people we know have died, it's our epidemic, our um, genocide that continues, and we're rather blessed in a country like Canada but still a lot of uh, hardship happens. So I just want to ask you, moving forward, or, or, or seek your support on if you meet a trans person, if you know a trans person, if you see someone struggling, try to be our friends, and we'd be eternally grateful for that.